What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to this episode of G4 Outdoors. For the third time, I got the Sig Sauer P322 back. Let's dig into this. Hope you enjoy the video. I hope this thing's worth a crap. Well, here's a little story about two friends that came together And we started up a YouTube just to talk about whatever We're on a boat catching big bass and smashing them cats From review videos to just making you laugh Cause we got guns, we got knives, we got fishing, we got hunting We got everything you like, so hit that subscribe button We're in the outdoors, doing things that we love We're talking guitars, girls, green grass, and guns Alright, so I did get this back and I have, uh I've been extremely procrastinating on this when did they do this the date received July of 20 the 28th of July so that's when I sent this in actually uh, this is when it came back so what did they do to the firearm they worked for him replaced replaced the barrel Replaced main string and adjust a hammer strut seat. Tested the firearm, passed function test, and fired without malfunction. Ammo fired, full mag of Aguila, I got that, and a mag of Blazer. And I don't have Blazer, and Blazer's not the best round of ammunition to be shooting, so I got some Copper Jacket, Winchester 333, 36 grain. So we're going to go with the 40 grain of Aguila. This isn't the cheapest of ammunition, so... You know, we can go with that. I got my two mags. I got the gun still in the bag. Let's take it the barrel. Let's take a look at the barrel while I got it out. All right, so I do not have a borescope, but as you can see down the barrel, it's nice and shiny. So this is a new barrel. And after shooting what they've shot, it's so clean down there, I would bet money that they swabbed that before they sent it back because it is a pretty clean barrel at the moment. I think that I sent this in with a, a magazine. I think I'm missing a magazine. So when I sent this out, I don't think that it came back. I'll have to look at home for that, but I don't think it has one. Let's load it up with the Aguila. Okay, on this Aguila, you can see that it's all individually packaged. So we're not getting damaged during the shipping and whatnot, rumbling around on the shelves. We got a nice packaging here, so nothing should be wrong with the heads on any of these. But we'll go ahead and load it up. I mean, does this hold 20? There we go. All right, a little blown out on the background. Sorry about that. But today I'm not coming out for accuracy, so I left the sights off of it. This is how it came back. The sights are in the box. My red dot's at home. Uh, you have to send this back to them without any uh, accoutrements on there, so... There's no uh, sights on here. I'm just going to run it, and all I'm doing today is testing the barrel. going to be a quick video. Guys, if you haven't yet, go back. Check out all of the other videos on the Sig Sauer P322. We have initial testing. We have the fouling of the barrel, and I know that you can go out to other YouTube channels. Uh, the biggest one off the top of my mind is Tools and Targets. Is that right? He goes down there with uh, the boroscope and he'll show you all that stuff down there, but I don't have that equipment. I don't need that equipment and basically I don't want that equipment. So anyways, fresh barrel. I need to put the slide on. I can't show you guys how to do that because of YouTube. So let's get this on. Let's get some rounds down range. See how the barrel holds up. <clears throat> all right, got the slide put back on. Uh, this only held 19 rounds. There's not room. Ooh, there is room for one more on there. I only got 19 in there though. And like I say, I have no sights on here, so I'm not going to be shooting at anything, just typically downrange. It'd be pretty nice if I can hit a 100 yard gong down there without any sights. I know you didn't hear that, but I think I hit that 18 out of 19 times. Maybe, I'm not sure. You have to have the magazine out of this to take it down. I just learned that. So guys, empty magazine. Chamber is clearly empty. Can you believe I just got demonetized for that? that that's silly. This YouTube place is running off into Never Never Land. All right, currently I'm just seeing the residue, the uh, powder residue. 
not necessarily any sign of fouling yet, which last time you know that happened within 40 to 50 rounds. So far, so good. Let's run another 20. Shot number 40 coming up. I know I was getting close to that target down there, but it was shooting extremely low. Another demonetization right there. Magazine is empty. Chamber is clearly clear. Give me a second. Let me check this out. All right, I had to get my good eyeball on that. It was still just some more residue from the gunpowder. Final 10 out of 50 Aguila. Magazine's empty. <laughs> YouTube don't know about this one. Chamber is clearly clear. And it's, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say 100%, but the barrel's dirty and I'm not sure what I'm looking at. While that airplane makes a bunch of ruckus, what I'm actually, I'm actually seeing a little bit of a pit and it's actually starting to build up some lead right now. Right, give me a second, I'll be right back. All right, so the barrel's pretty clean on that round too, just a lot of gunpowder residue. Now I've got the Winchester 333 box. These are 36 grain at 1200 and 80 feet per second. These are copper plated, copper plated. Uh, even though you would think that copper plated bullets wouldn't lead your barrel up, this copper plated bullet did lead my barrel up on the last barrel I had. Uh, anyways, 20 rounds, copper plated Winchester 333 going down range. You notice that's a lot more smoky than the Aguila. A lot more smoky. Hey, let me take a look at this barrel. I'll be right back. So everything looked fine on shot number 50, 70, but there is a little anomaly in the barrel. I think that we're starting to see some lead up. Let's go, uh, I'm just gonna wrap off some, a whole bunch of these, see what the outcome is. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90th round here. One failure to feed, no big deal. Um, let me take a look. Okay, just like in all other videos, I'm starting to see a little bit of leading up here towards the, the front of the barrel. Uh, I don't even know if I can show that to you on camera, but I'm gonna run a couple more rounds, not a couple, 20. Not happy. Failure to do something. Light primer strike. Another light primer strike. Another light primer strike. Light primers are pretty common on 22s. I don't really throw much uh, attention that way unless it starts happening a lot. So there's a double 
light primer strike. What that indicates to me is it's more ammunition than it is gun. And another one. So we got two bad bullets there. That's fine. You're going to come across that with 22s. Let me check this out. Okay, so how many was that? 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 110 or 130. Lost count. 130 rounds. And let's get right up on in here. Let's get right up on in here. And hopefully... And hopefully, let's uh, shine a light on this here real quick. Can you guys see that? I'm looking into my little bitty camera in here and I can't. You can clearly see that the end of this is letting up and it's all right up here towards the front. Uh, okay, now, now let me tell you, let me tell you why this is such a bad deal. The 22 diameter bullet is meant to go down that hole, that hole. So a .22 bullet is supposed to go down this barrel. When the barrel starts letting up, that closes the barrel down. So now you got a .22 barrel trying to go through a .220 hole. It doesn't work that way. That's not how it's supposed to go. Uh, Okay, so, so why is that dangerous and why should that not be happening? Well, the 22 round that goes in here and this barrel, it is designed to handle a specific load, a specific round, a specific speed. Uh, you can put the stingers in here and run this thing all the way up. When you have a barrel blockage, you're, you're presenting a whole lot more pressure back here in the chamber. And when that happens, you will get a lot of blowback coming out of the ejection port. And if you're not careful, if there's someone standing next to you, from me to you, they're going to get all of that blow by, uh, unburnt and burnt residue, gunpowder residue on them. Uh, not only that, it's causing excessive pressure inside the chamber. And then when it comes out, you don't even have a stabilized projectile. Like in my first video, I was at seven yards hitting the targets. The bullets were going sideways. Uh, again, go back into my collection and look at those videos. Uh, this is just a dangerous gun to have. I wouldn't recommend this gun to absolutely anybody for any reason. With the barrel being leaded up like that, you're not getting accuracy. Again, th this is not a hunting weapon. I would never, ever in my life take this out to, squirt, to shoot squirrels. Uh, it's just not that kind of gun. It's a plinking gun to plink downrange. Now, let me ask you, who's going to be plinking at pop cans? It's going to be the kids. It's going to be the kids' adults, the adults that are kids, if you know what I'm saying, me. Uh, you know, you're going to be out there shooting pop cans, not realizing that your barrel is leaded up. Next thing that happens is you're going to get an all overpressured barrel and something could happen. I'm not saying it will. The chances are highly unlikely. But if you step up into a center fire rifle or pistol, this is a very, very huge, huge problem. So just uh, shrink that, uh, whatever you want to call that comparison, apple to, apples to oranges, shrink that comparison down into 22. The same thing is happening. The same dangers are there and all of that. So, you know, Sig Sauer really messed up on this gun. They sent a new barrel out to me. I will tell you, if they come out and make a good barrel in these, 20 rounds or semi-auto semi 22, you can have a lot of fun for a long time with one of these. But currently the Taurus TX-22, it's sitting on top. And that's all because of this barrel. I'm not shooting paper today. I will throw in some uh, close-up shots on this. Just a bad, bad deal. I'm going to try and send this back to Sig Sauer. Try and get my money back because I overpaid on this uh, by quite a bit. And by quite a bit, I mean quite a bit. So, anyways, in the long run... This is a dangerous gun. This is an unsafe gun. It's not an accurate gun. It's not a shootable gun. 
It's not even a properly functioning gun. Six hour, you did me wrong. And uh, this is the second 22 from six hour that I've bought. The first one being a six hour mosquito. I don't even know if I can find that footage anymore. It's on a different channel. But that thing was absolutely 100% non-functional. Every round you fired, you had to clear it. You had to do something to the gun. But it shot when it shot. It shot good when it shot. This one right here, the, the groupings just start opening up. The worse that barrel, the worse the openings. The worse the barrel. It's just a bad deal all the way around. Anyway, I'm on a contact SIG. This is episode number three, I think. I don't know, guys. Stick around for episode number four. I'm going to tell you what the outcome of this is. Again, if you have the 6-hour P322 and you're out planking, when you're done shooting, please look at your barrel. Uh, you don't know that your barrel is going bad if you don't look at your barrel or if you don't look at your groupings on paper, a proper grouping. I'm not talking about just offhand, bang, bang, bang. Put out a good grouping. See how it's shooting. Look down your barrel with your gun disassembled and check for that leading because I believe that a lot of people don't know that the barrels are leaded. Shooting pop cans, you can shoot them all day long. That's easy stuff. But when it comes down to it, your accuracy isn't that good. Anyway, I'm just rambling on too much, guys. If you like the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. I'll see you in the next one. I'm out. Monday. Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. I just dream of fishing while I'm going through my workday. I listen to my boss, though he's driving me berserk. Eh? Damn it, I can't take much more because my brain is really hurting. And now the bank is always calling and I don't know what to do. And I haven't bought a crankbait since like 1992. But the bass are out there schooling.